Properties of Determinants. Our first property of matrices says that if we find the determinant of A times B, it's equivalent to finding the determinant of A multiplied by the determinant of B. So for this video, I'm just going to verify these to you. So if I find debt A, that's negative 5, determinant of B is 11, and so obviously that would be negative 5 times 11, which is negative 55. Now, if I find the determinant of A, B, notice we do get negative 55, thus verifying that property. Let's take a look at the next property that says if you have some sort of scalar, so here we can see that A and B, if I took matrix B times 10, I would get matrix A. Now let's take a look at the determinant of A compared to the determinant of B. Notice the difference between them. One is negative 5, the other is negative 5,000. This property says because this is a 3 by 3 matrix, therefore n is 3, I'm going to take the determinant of B times the scalar, which was 10. I have multiplied everything in B by 10 to get to A. I'm going to take negative 5 times 10 to the third. And that is what gives me negative 5,000 because 10 to the third is 1,000. Our next property tells us that if a square matrix is invertible, its determinant does not equal zero and vice versa. So if the determinant does not equal zero, then the matrix is invertible. So let's take a look at the determinant of A and notice that it's negative five. And then if I find A inverse, I get a solution. Now let's take a look at B, determinant of B, zero, which we should have been able to figure out because we have a whole row of zeros. But now notice if I take B inverse, I get an error. And the error is that singular matrices do not have an inverse. Our next property has to do with the determinant of the inverse of a matrix. Essentially, we're saying if you find the determinant of the inverse of a matrix, it's equal to the multiplicative inverse of the original matrix. So let's take a look at the determinant of A, negative 5, as we knew. And so the inverse of that would be 1 divided by negative 5, which is negative 1 fifth, or negative 0.2. Now let's find A inverse. And let's actually find the determinant then of A inverse. And notice it is, in fact, negative 0.2 or negative 1 fifth, just as we expected. Our last property has to do with determinants of transpose matrices. So as you can see, I've got A, and then I've got A transpose. I'm going to find the determinant of A, and I'm going to find the determinant of A transpose. And notice both of those values are the same exactly as the property said they would be. This is another one of those keepsake slides that tell you all of the things that are the same. So if A is invertible, that means AX equals B has a unique solution for every N by 1 column matrix B. AX equals 0 has only the trivial solution. A is row equivalent to the identity of N, which means if A is 2 by 2, it's equivalent to the identity of 2 by 2 matrix. A can be written as the product of elementary matrices, and the determinant of A is not equal to 0. Up next, applications of determinants.